All right, sorry about that. Uh, when I was uh, trying to decide what I wanted to talk about this morning, I uh, came across some material uh, on the book of Jonah that was uh, kind of looking at it uh, from a little bit different lens than we typically look at it through. And so I wanted to share some of that with you this morning. And uh, the title of the lesson tonight is A City in Need. And uh, the city that we're going to be looking at, discussed in the book of Jonah, uh, is the city of Nineveh. And Nineveh was a massive, massive city. Uh, it was the capital of the Assyrian Empire. Um, and it was just a huge, huge city. I, I did some different studying and found out how large the city was. And, uh, something like 60 miles in circumference or something like that. And I, it's, I read some things that said that the, the city had walls that were over 100 feet high. Uh, and that the walls were so wide that chariots could ride around the top of the walls. Um, I read conflicting things about the population of what Nineveh would have been. Uh, some things said it would have been around 600,000 people that lived in this city. Uh, other things said it could have been as, as much as over a million or more. Um, so I don't really know exactly what the population was here, but uh, Nineveh was a city in need. Um, Nineveh was an evil city. Um, here, as we'll see here in a few minutes, uh, God would describe Nineveh uh, as an evil city. He would say that the, that the evil rose up to him, up, up before him. And so you kind of have the situation here where uh, Nineveh uh, is essentially standing before God ready to be judged. And uh, God looks at the city and he decides that he wants to give Nineveh another chance. And his second chance for Nineveh would be to send Jonah uh, to go and talk to this city and to let them, <clears throat> to let them know <clears throat> um, that they needed to change their ways. And um, I think most of us are probably very familiar with the story of Jonah. Um, but typically we look at that story and we talk about you know, Jonah in the well or Jonah in the big fish. And we kind of get caught up in that, and we, I think, miss a lot of points that we could use from the book of Jonah to apply to our lives. And that's, that's what I want to do today, is I want to look at um, the, the powerful impact that Jonah had in uh, causing an entire city to, to repent uh, for their evil ways, and how we can apply things from that to our lives today. The first thing that we can learn from Jonah is... Uh, is that we can't run from hard work. You know, doing, doing the Lord's work is hard work, uh, but we cannot run from that. Uh, Jonah chapter 1, verses 1 through 3 tells us, Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amite, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, the great city, and call out against it, for their evil has come up before me. This is what I was alluding to earlier. But Jonah rose to flee to Tarshish uh, from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. Uh, so he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish away from the presence of the Lord. So Jonah was called on to do, Lord, to, to do the, the work of God. And he stood up, got ready, dusted himself off, and then ran away. And um, that's something that we simply cannot do. Uh, God has work that needs to be done, and we, we can't do what Jonah did in that case and run away. And, of course, this is where um, a great storm comes. The people on the ship that he's on are afraid they're going to die. They cast lots decide that it was Jonah. Uh, and Jonah says, if this is my fault, throw me over the side. They do that, and he gets swallowed by the fish, uh, and is in there for three days. Um, but we cannot run from hard work. Um, Sorry about that. Nope. Okay. 
sorry. Um, like I was saying, it's not always easy to be a messenger of God's word. Uh, it could not have been easy for Jonah to have been told to go to Nineveh and to point out the fact that they were living in sin, the fact that they needed to change, otherwise they would be destroyed. So we've got a city on the edge of destruction, and Jonah being sent there to, uh, to basically tell them that they are wrong and that they need to change. Uh, and it's not easy for us today to be a messenger of God's word. It's not easy for us to go and talk to the people that we know. It's not easy for us to go into our jobs and go throughout our daily lives and to, um, to always do everything that, that we're called on to do. But, but we have to stand up and we have to do the work that God puts in front of us and we cannot run from it. The next thing that we can learn from this is that we must be confident and trust in God's signs. Matthew 13, 12, or I'm sorry, Matthew 12, 38 and 40 tells us, Then some Pharisees and teachers of the law said to him, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. He answered, A wicked and adulterous generation asked for a sign, but none will be given it except for the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of a huge fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and in three nights in the heart of the earth. The sign that Jonah had was the fish. He was sent this big fish. He had to spend three days in the belly of this fish to get him to snap into it and really realize that God was serious about what he asked him to go do. Uh, for us, we have the entire Bible. We have uh, the resurrection of Jesus. We know we have these signs, and we really don't have an excuse. We've got to be confident in God and trust in our signs. Uh, John says, in John 20, 31, says, Jesus performed uh, many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. We've got to be confident and trust in everything that we know to be true and let it motivate us uh, to do God's work. We also learn from Jonah that we need to preach the word of God. Jonah chapter 3 verses 1 and 2 tells us, then the, word, uh, then the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it the message that I tell you. So just as Jonah was told to rise and go call out the message uh, that was told to him, we have to do the same today. Because the gospel is the power that can transform people's lives forever. And we have to believe that, trust in that, and we have to let the people around us know that. Romans chapter 1 verse 16 tells us, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. To further show this point, 1 Peter 4.11 tells us, Whoever speaks as one who speaks, oracles of God, whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies, in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to Him belong the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Our next passage here is the one that Scott read for us a few minutes ago. Uh, I've added verse 5 in here on this slide as well. Uh, but it says, I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. That very clearly lays out to us that just as Jonah was expected to go out and tell and to preach, that we have the exact same responsibility today to all the people around us. 
another lesson that we can learn is that we can't be afraid of a contra uh, confrontational message. Jonah chapter 3, 4 tells us, Jonah began into the city, going a day's journey, and he called out, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. We know that from the passage we just looked at, that there is a place for reproving and rebuking as well as exhorting. Uh, God's word can be a confrontational message. It forces us to look at ourselves uh, and to realize that some things are not right. And it forces people to look at it and realize that they can be lost, maybe that they are lost, that there are things that they need to do. And, um, you know, we live in a, a day and age where, you know, God's word can be very controversial and uh, we just have to not be afraid of that and we have to do what God tells us to do and to go out and tell his message uh, regardless of those things. In doing so, though, we can read from Colossians 4, 5, and 6. It tells us that we need to be wise with our words and also Jude 22, 23. Colossians 4, 5, and 6 says, Walk in wisdom toward outsiders, making the best use of the time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. And Jude 22 and 23 tells us, And have mercy on those who doubt. Save others by snatching them out of the fire. To others, show mercy with fear, hating even the garment stained by the flesh. This is uh, following along in the, the story of the book of Jonah here. Uh, this is where you really see the city begin to change. You see the king of Assyria uh, greatly troubled by Jonah's message. He uh, begins to, uh, you know, he takes his robe off, he uh, puts himself in sackcloth and ashes, and he's uh, fasting, and he's calling out to God, asking for God to change his mind about his decision to destroy Nineveh. You also see the king uh, putting out a proclamation commanding the rest of the city to do the same thing. He even uh, went as far as to say, you know, stop feeding the animals, stop giving the animals water because uh, he was so serious and he wanted everybody to understand how serious this was and how, how uh, what a dire situation the city was in and that they needed to appeal to God uh, to turn back from his anger. And this is the, word of the, the words of the king here. It says, uh, this is Jonah 3, verse 9, it says, Who knows? God may turn and relent and turn from his fierce anger so that we may not perish. And that's exactly what happened. God saw the signs of repentance and change in this entire city, and he decided to let them live. So even though Jonah was reluctant to go do this, and even though he struggled uh, with the whole process, uh, even after he went in and, and preached the word, uh, God still used him to deliver his message to change the lives of people in this entire city. The last point that I have here is that we have to understand the gravity of the situation. Colossians 4, 5, which we've already read uh, 5 and 6 earlier, tells us that we must be wise with our time. Uh, God's only given us a certain amount of time here on this earth to to carry out His will and to reach out to other people and tell them uh, what they need to know and how they, how they can be saved. And we must be wise with that time that He's given us. Luke 14, 23 tells us that we must compel people to listen. Um, I'll read that real quick. It says, And the Master said to the servant, Go out to the highways and hedges and compel people to come in, that my house may be filled. You know, it's our job to go out and to compel people to come into God's house and to, uh, to save souls. In 1 Corinthians 15, 34, we learn that we need to realize our shame. And this is the one that really 
really will kind of prick your heart here. 1 Corinthians 15.34 says, Wake up from your drunken stupor, as is right, and do not go on sinning. For some have no knowledge of God. I say this to your shame. If, if we continue to, to live our lives without going out and letting other people know that God loves them and that, that there is a plan of salvation that they can be part of, then it's, it's our shame. It's on us if we continue to just sit idly by and not um, talk to the people that, that we love and talk to people that we don't know very well just to, to get the message out and to let... God's word do its work, just as it did in Nineveh. Uh, God wanted to give Nineveh a chance. He sent Jonah with a message, and that message made all the difference. And we have the gospel today that is the message that can make all the difference. And it's our job to, to be like Jonah, and not exactly like Jonah. You, you go through the book. He, he was not perfect at all. But to, to do what Jonah did and to be brave and stand up and, and speak for God. Because there are souls dying um, all around us and too much time has already been wasted. Um, I think a lot of times in life we don't actually think about things in that way. We don't really have the right mindset or viewpoint on things. We don't really realize that when we go to work with the people that we work with or we know that, but we don't think about it, that those people are lost. And what that really means, especially if we just choose to not say anything and not do anything or to, to not be the examples that we should be uh, with the things that we say and the things that we do, uh, and to let God work through us and to let God work through His Word and change the lives of people. See, Nineveh, had a responsibility in this story. None of the responsibility was to repent. They had to change. They were sinful, they were evil, and they needed to change. God's responsibility is always the same. His, he, he is the righteous judge, he's the, the justice judge, uh, the just judge, and it's his responsibility to judge. And he has to judge one way or another. Uh, Jonah's responsibility in this book was to attempt to change the great city of Nineveh. And because of all these three different things happening, uh, a massive city with hundreds of thousands of people made a massive change. And we as uh, Christians have the same responsibility today. We have a responsibility to seek and save the lost. We have a responsibility to live our lives in a way that is an example to others. We have a responsibility to, to stand up and speak for God. And... Uh, It's, you know, just something that we all need to think about for ourselves. Are we really doing that? Are we not? Um, I know I'm not always, and that's why I need a, a lesson like this as well. Um, as much as the focus on this lesson has been on reaching outside of this building and reaching the lost, uh, it's just as important that we take care of each other in this, in this building. Uh, you know, if... If there's anyone who has a need, if there's anyone who is struggling in your life, let us know about it. Uh, we have to be here for each other. We have to be the, the Christian brothers and sisters that, that we say that we are, that we can go to one another and talk to each other about things and to, to help each other. Uh, if there's any of you that, that needs prayers for anything going on in your life, if there's any of you here this morning that haven't uh, done what you need to do to be saved, um, we would ask that you uh, let us talk to you more about that and to let us um, help you in any way that we can to make sure that you uh, do get saved and that you can um, have the hope of living in heaven forever. Uh, if you would, please come and uh, come down to the front row if, if, if you fit any of those categories and we will um, help you out as we stand and sing this song. Thank <clears throat> you.